in a UK town called Bedford, and this was filmed during the global pandemic of 2020. We're at the bus station. There are some public toilets here, and the council have instituted a reasonable one-in-one-out policy. But the way they've done it is baffling. Outside each of the ladies' and the gents' toilets are these tapes projecting into the path. At the end of each tape is a chair, and generally on each chair is a, as a council worker, sat to enforce the one-in-one-out rule. Now, I don't know why they didn't arrange these tapes to run besides the buildings, because arranged as they are, the tapes project into the pathway and create a significant obstruction which makes social distancing um, a real challenge. That's aggravated even further because these gents are very sociable fellows and their friends come and have a chat with them which increases the size of the obstruction and further impedes social distancing. So I told the council what I saw as the problem and asked them why they were doing it this way. The council, being the council, ignored me completely. They ignored me for the last week of May, they ignored me for all of June and they ignored me for the first week of July until I wrote to them again. Guess what? They ignored me for another two weeks. But then I got a letter from Glenn Dines, who is team leader of street scene management at the council. Well, pause the video if you want to read it. But for me, the two standout things are, one, no apology for the time he kept me waiting, and two, my issue wasn't addressed at all. In my experience, this is absolutely normal for the council. They will ignore you if they can. If they can't, they'll send you a stock response, but they certainly won't read carefully what you wrote and answer it bit by bit. Why? Well, because council. You may say, and many people I speak to do say, yeah, but what are you going to do? And the absolute truth is, not a lot. You can stand for election, ho, ho, ho. You can contact those we elect and finance to represent us to put these things right. Ho, ho, ho. You can rely on management from within the organisation. Ho, ho, triple ho. It's job for life, no market forces, legalised extraction of income from the unwilling. We're screwed. But there are some things you can do, and that's what this whole channel is trying to encourage. So here's what I did. Hello, Glenn. Please explain why it took one reminder and more than two months for you to answer my email. Secondly, please explain why you've taken time to answer questions I did not ask whilst totally failing to answer any of the issues I did raise. Thirdly, please reread my original message which is still below and this time address the issues I raised. Fourthly, please consider this a formal complaint against you for the way you've spectacularly failed to deal with this. For my formal complaint, the complaint items are the three items above and the desired outcomes are these. 1. That you acknowledge that you took far too long to reply. 2. That you acknowledge that you failed entirely to address the issues or questions I raised. 3. That you explain why the previous two items occurred. 4. That you commit to getting me a substantive response in something less than a week from today. 5. That you apologise for wasting my time and doing so poorly here. 6 that your boss writes to me confirming your deficiencies in this and committing to your retraining. That told him right, <laughs> but guess what? The s*** <laughs> didn't reply. <laughs> well alrighty then. So after another two weeks I sent this. If they don't answer the door when you knock it then knock on another door. So this one went to customer services. Please see the email below to Glenn Dines. He has, as usual, not replied, so please forward this to Glenn's boss for actioning the formal complaint, and please tell me who that is. You can find the substance of the complaint and the desired outcomes in that email. Please acknowledge receipt of this email. This email and emails like it are written in response to the kinds of failure modes you get from the council. We didn't get your email, for example, is one. And whenever you can, get the direct name and email address of people other than the one you have the problem with, like their boss um, and their boss. Well, another week went by, and two days, but then this. OK, and OK COVID, but a week and two days to send an email to another person, it's too much, it's too much. So this. 
and no answer for another week. So then this. And two days after that, this. Now this branch was a digression from the main issue, which was the bus station toilets. So I let this one go. Um, I'm a bit sceptical. I understand COVID, but I would have thought a switchboard is one of the easiest things to put through so that people can operate them from home. But I might be wrong. So if you know different, please let me know. Anyway, let's look at the response to my formal complaint. It arrived um, just over a month after I submitted the formal complaint, although it is dated two weeks before that. So, hmm. by all means, pause it and read it in full if you like. But um, I think the complaint response was very well written and um, every aspect of the complaint was upheld. But remember, that whole rigmarole was just to get just to get justice from the council, to get them to recognise that ignoring a customer so resolutely and consistently is not acceptable. But Alison did respond to the substance of my original concern about the pathway being blocked, and here's what she said. Oh well, an expert says it's not a problem. This bollard is protecting a trip hazard. The trouble is, with the man on the left and left and the bin on the right, it's um, it's a it's an obstacle course, and um, it just funnels people into each other as they try to pass. <laughs> Well, I'm bored with this, but much reassured by the council expert. Here are my takeaways. Number one, the way they've implemented the one in one out toilet system is bizarre and it seriously obstructs footfall in the bus station. The council's responsiveness to my inquiries in this regard was appalling and that's entirely typical for this council. My formal complaint was upheld, which is gratifying, and Ms Ivat uh, dealt with it very well, although if anything was done behind the scenes, I have no idea. I don't expect there'll be any improvement anytime soon in the council's responsiveness. The council's experts' conclusions are perplexing. I'll send this video to the council and they're welcome to respond in any regard and I'll treat their feedback with the respect it deserves and publish it if it's appropriate. I don't think I can claim any victories in this case except perhaps for that formal complaint um, conclusion. It got something on the record. It may have got um, Glenn a moderate kick in the arse. I don't think I can claim a for this one. 
but I've certainly pushed back and I urge you to as well. If you'd like to help me in any capacity to make these videos, um, then please do get in contact. If you'd like to make any comments, um, including the negative ones, put them below, but just a few information, I do work. I don't know why everyone thinks I must be unemployed. <laughs> I fully complete my tax return, I pay all my dues, I earn my own living. So don't bother with that one, eh? But by all means, you know, sad old git and all that, bring it on. And thanks for watching.